All right, in this lecture, we're going to learn about customizing Bash, uh, you know, setting up particular settings that we use very often or particular environment that we're going to use in our everyday uh, use of the computer, the Unix machine, then, then we want to customize it in such a way that we don't have to repeat these certain commands every time. So uh, we've learned about, you know, variables. There are certain environment variables. These are, envi these are variables that are set up by the, you know, when you, when you log into the computer. Um, these, uh, you know, have a certain uh, function or, you know, utility. Uh, probably the most notable of those is the path variable. So this is the variable that your computer searches uh, every time you, you uh, try to execute an executable, you know, that an executable being any Unix command. So, you know, grep, aux, sed, whatever. It looks in the path and, uh, you know, tries to determine if the whatever executable you called is found there. And so you can add a new um, path, uh, you know, new search path to your path variable um, using one of these two commands. So basically, uh, you never want to completely reset the path because it'll clear it out. So, you know, you would never want to uh, not have this term on, on the end there, okay? So you always want to set path by saying path equals uh, you know, some new search path that you want to add and then the path variable. So if you did it this way, it would add the search path to the beginning of, of the path variables. So uh, that w if, you know, you had multiple commands, say you had a command called GNU new plot and it appeared in several different directories, uh, they're going to, whatever one's used is going to be the one that appears first on the search path. So uh, sometimes you want things to appear, you know, first in the search path, or if you want it to appear later in the search path, uh, you, you could do it this way. Of course, we've talked about aliases a little bit. Uh, we know that they're just shorthand names for common commands, and here I just list a bunch of useful aliases that you might uh, like to use. Uh, Something really interesting now that we know both Vi and Emacs, and hopefully you've decided which one you like better and which one you're going to use as your editor. Another reason I try to convince you that to use one or uh, these two and not some other one is that you can actually use one of these editors uh, on the command line itself. Uh, so the best way to show you this is to give you an example. Uh, we use the set command. So if I say set dash o Vi, that's going to give me a Vi command access on the command line. So if I type in something like echo, uh, this is a very long command line, blah, 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 right? So there I, I just echoed that to the screen, and if we bring that back up, um, we can actually edit this, and this is mostly useful from the very long command lines, because we can edit this with Vi commands. So if I hit escape to go into editor mode, I can actually move along with uh, H, and L, just like I would before. I can go back a word with B. I can go forward a word with W or to the end of the word with E. I can go to the beginning of the line with uh, the caret. I can go to the end of the line uh, with a dollar sign. I can uh, go to the capital T uh, directly. I can uh, delete two words. Not sure what happened there. Uh, I guess I did it and uh, some, something happened there, but I, you can see that uh, this is is gone. Uh, so anyway, um, th that's that's kind of how that works. Of course, you can do the same thing with Emacs. So if we set dash o e dash uh, set something, uh, let's see here. Okay, let's try this again. Set dash o Emacs. Uh, then we bring up a long command again. Now we can move along the command line as we would in Emacs. So um, if I hit uh, Control A, I'll go to the beginning of the line. If I hit Control F, uh, I'll go forward. If I hit Control K, I'll kill the end of the, of the rest of the line there. Okay, so that that's the idea behind the set command. There are uh, other popular set items uh, that you might want to use. You can set uh, dash O no clobber would prevent overriding when you, with a redirect. So if you ever redirect an output uh, using this or or this. Uh, as you know now, that just overwrites what's there. Uh, no, no clobber will prevent that from happening, and, and then there's some other things. Ignore of end of file uh, prevents terminating a, uh, this should be login, a login shell. 
I'll fix that in the notes. Uh, a login shell with control D. Uh, notify, notifies the completion of a background job immediately. So if you set a job to run to the background and then it completes, you're normally notified uh, at the next prompt. So the next time you issue a command, it'll, it'll tell you that it's done. If you'd like to be notified immediately, you can set, uh, set dash O notify. And if you can also use uh, no glob, and it'll it'll disable any wildcard expansion. Okay, so uh, the you know a lot of these uh, we may have aliases that we always use, or we want every time we want to edit in by mode, so we want to put that somewhere that it's called every time we log in, and that way it prevents us from having to execute those commands every time. Same goes for environment variables. Uh, you know that we may want to reset, we want to add things to our path, or we want to have some special shell variables that we set on our own because we might use them. And the place that we put those are in one of two initialization scripts. Uh, the first one is called a, a login script or a profile, and in bash it always goes by one of these three names, the bash profile, the profile, or the bash login. It's searched in that order, so it looks first for bash profile, then profile, and then bash login. Uh, so, you know, you could have multiple ones uh, if you wanted to, but it's going to always find the first one in this order. So if a bash profile will uh, overwrite a, a profile or a bash login. And uh, we'll talk about what should go in these files, the login script uh, here. And then the second one is the run command script. So the difference is that the login script only gets run on the initial login, and the run command script gets run every time you uh, initialize a new, a new uh, interactive shell. So uh, things that should go in there, um, you know, in your login script you should put uh, environment variable changes. This is where you'd make additions to your path or whatever. Any custom shell variables that, that you always want to be persist, you know, that you want to be initialized. Uh, any kind of startup messages, you know, if you, you notice um, when I log in, uh, when I log in to Shamu, um, I have to log out to show you this. Uh, if, when I log in to Shamu, uh, you see I, I get a special message down there that tells me some information about the kernel, uh, the version of Bash I'm running, the uptime, and, and etc. So uh, that that is actually in my uh, login script. But you can see when I start a new uh, interactive script, like if I just simply type bash, then that, that doesn't show up because it's in my login script, my bash profile, and, and not in my bash RC. And then another thing you, you can't forget to do from your login script is to actually source uh, your, your run command script. So this, this needs to appear somewhere in your uh, login script. It's usually uh, done with, uh, with an if statement, so something like if the file exists, so the, the dash f and then, then the name of the file, dot bash rc, dot bash rc, something like that, then source bash rc. And uh, fi. So, so um, I'm also missing a, let's see, there, there should be a then statement over here. But uh, anyway, you can look back to the previous lecture on the if statements to get the syntax correct there. But uh, that's, that's usually done uh, in, your, in your bash profile. You have a statement like that that says, you know, if the bash RC file exists, then you should source it. And that makes sure it gets run. So if you make any changes to your, to your login file, uh, you either have to log in and log back, log out and log back in to, for those changes to be effective, or you can simply just run this command. Uh, source, you know, your bash profile, and that'll set you set you back up. So then, what should go in your run command script? Uh, these are your aliases. So, uh, you know, these are things that you'd want to be reset every time you open a new interactive shell. So you may unset some aliases, or you may, uh, you know, occasionally, uh, you know, change your your setting from Vi to Emacs. But whenever you run a new shell, a new login, non, you know, sub shell, then you'd want those to go back to your default setting. So any special aliases that you want to persist over time, you put in there your set commands. You know this would be where you put your set dash o, vi. Uh, any um, any startup messages that you want may want to have. Uh, th this should be you know um, subshell specific. 
startup messages here. Oops, sorry. So subshell specific startup messages would go here. And um, like I said, you know, any any shell variables that you may want to reset every every time you you launch a, sh a subshell. So uh, th this is basically how you'd customize Vi. Uh, I'm sorry, customize uh, your your Bash shell. Uh, I'll just give you give you an example of what mine looks like, just to show you. If you look at my Bash profile, um, you can see I have quite a few stuff in there. So I have a, a, a couple of variables, OS and OS version and machine name. That are just you know calling Unix variables and then doing some searches on them to find uh, the information I need. Um, I also work on many different machines and like to only have one Bash profile, so I have some kind of host name specific stuff. So you can see, you know, if I'm I have an if statement there that says if the host name is Lagrange.local, then you know set the Python path to this, or you know if the host name is Shamu, then set these paths. Okay, uh, if the OS is Darwin, which means basically is it a Mac, then set these paths. And then, uh, of course, uh, my bash RC always exists, so I, I just have the source there. Then there's my hello message, okay? Uh, also give you an idea of what my bash RC looks like. And it, it's, it's quite complicated because I have a lot of special colors and stuff. You may notice that, uh, you know, I like to use this dark color scheme and so this is a bunch of color settings that that make uh, you know it look nice uh, the way I, I the colors show up the way I want them and look nice on a dark background. So uh, you know here's uh, many many stuff here some stuff that we you know you probably don't understand because we haven't covered it has to do with Git and other things, uh, but you will see some aliases there. So I have an alias that goes up a directory or up to uh, two directories, uh, changes to a particular directory. I even have an alias set to log into Shamu there. So. Just to give you an idea of what mine looks like. So this is how you may want to customize your own uh, bash environment.